Welcome everybody, it's me, that one guy for the one place at that one time, Jaguar 110, and welcome to Hockey Imperialism Season 11. Yep, here we are with the residue number one from Hockey Imperialism number 10 from the 96 teams that we had. And so these are the top 32 from that season, and they're going to be entering into their own league of residue one. So we're going to go ahead and get right into the action to our wheel spin. Here we are with our first wheel spin, and we'll be having the Seattle Kraken go first. Here we are, Seattle. Let's get you going and take on the Arbutsford Canucks. Welcome to Arbutsford Center in Arbutsford, British Columbia, where the Seattle Kraken and the Arbutsford Canucks start off our residue season. We go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 45 seconds. That's between Seattle and Arbutsford as the Canucks have a 3-2 lead, but Seattle's trying to push right now as they have pulled their goalie to have a 6-on-5 man advantage. But the Canucks are not backing down as they have control of the puck and look to shoot, but a good block. So Seattle's looking to get back into the zone to get another scoring shot as Wenberg has a shot and he scores! And he ties the game 3-3. So now we have a brand new game right here. So we're going to go ahead and stick with this action to see who breaks this tie or if we see and go to overtime. Canucks win the faceoff down in the middle of the ice. They enter the zone. Gets a lot of poke checked and Wentberg has it and passes down. Less than 20 seconds to go. Makes that 15. The Canucks gain control back in neutral zone. They're spinning around. Passes down. Schwartz steals it with 10 seconds left. He passes across the ice to Borgen. Seattle's looking to break the tie. Goes around the net. Passes down. Prokofsky couldn't get a shot off. And we will be going to overtime. Welcome to overtime number one between the Arbutsford Canucks and the Seattle Kraken. With that, we'll see you all in the final seconds. Tries to get it around. Does not work. And McCain has it. Passes down to Beneers. McCain has it now. Could be a two-on-one. Takes a shot. And Everly gets the rebound. And the Seattle Kraken come back. And win in overtime number three, four, two, three. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who they will be taking from the Arbersford Canucks. And from the Arbersford Canucks, Jack Rathbone is now a Seattle Kraken. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Arbersford Canucks got taken out by the Kraken. So now Seattle enters into Canada. With that, let's go to the wheel to see who is next. Arbutford is out, 31 teams to go. Next up are the Toledo Walleye. All right, Toledo, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Let's go get a game. Welcome to Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio, where the Toledo Walleye and the Columbus Blue Jackets will battle out for two thirds of Ohio. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 45 seconds left between Columbus and Toledo as the Blue Jackets are down. 1-2 to two against the Toledo Walleyes. So they have pulled their goalie, making it a 6-on-5 man advantage. As that pass does not communicate at all. So a little bit of fumbling by the Blue Jackets. They do have control though. A lot more uh, aggressiveness happening here. And Sick dumps it in. Blue Jackets have less than 30 seconds to go. They have control. Loses it. Loney held against the wall. Lots of puck battling. Toledo has control now inside their own zone. Looking to get it out. They have 10 seconds left in the game. Big hit. Columbus has control. But they lose it on a hit. Line A. Tries to take a shot. Whiffs on it. Another shot. Good block. And the Toledo Walleye win 2-1. to one. Good on them. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at who they will be taking from the Columbus Blue Jackets. And from the Columbus Blue Jackets, Johnny Gaudreau is now a Toledo Walleye. All right, let us go to that map. Here we are at the map as the Columbus Blue Jackets got taken out by the Toledo Walleye. So now Toledo owns two-thirds of Ohio. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Columbus is out. 30 teams to go. Next up are the St. Louis Blues. All right, St. Louis, where are you going with this spin? To take Iowa. As they take Iowa, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. Two, two teams in this spin, and we'll be taking a player from the Arbutsford Canucks. 
And from the Ibersford Canucks, Niles Hoglander is now a St. Louis Blue. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the Manitoba Moose. All right, Manitoba, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Winnipeg Jets. Let's go get a game. Welcome to Canada Life Center in Winnipeg, Manitoba, where the Manitoba Moose and the Winnipeg Jets battle out for Manitoba. We go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are, it's about 40 seconds left between Manitoba and Winnipeg, as the Moose have a one to nothing lead against the Jets. So the Jets are looking to get some action going as they have a six on five man advantage as they pulled their goalie, looking to score this tying goal. They're putting a lot of pressure on Scheifel, couldn't really get there. So off control, Appleton had it, loses it on a hit, 20 seconds to go. The Moose are looking to get that empty netter, but they're being pressured. Still off control, good poke check. And now the Jets will take control. Never mind, the Moose have it now with 10 seconds to go. And another big hit. And then Moose still have it. He takes a shoot shot and scores. Not a shoot. Goodness me. But with that, that should do it for this one. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Moose will be taking from the Jets. And from the Winnipeg Jets, Connor Hellebuck is now a Manitoba Moose. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Jets got taken out by the Moose. So Manitoba owns all of Manitoba now. All right, let's go to the wheel. Winnipeg is out, 29 teams to go. Next up are the Wheelie Nailers. All right, Nailers, where are you going with this spin? To take Virginia. As they take Virginia, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. Three teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Columbus Blue Jackets. And from the Columbus Blue Jackets, Zach Kwarenski is now a Wheelie Nailer. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the St. Louis Blues. All right, St. Louis, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Rockford Ice Hogs. Let's go get a game. Welcome to BMO Harris Bink Center in Rockford, Illinois, where the St. Louis Blues look to expand on their two-state territory by taking on the Rockford Ice Hogs. We go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 10 seconds left between St. Louis and Rockford as the Blues have a 4-1 lead. So they're going to go ahead and take this win with a good game. So with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Blues will be taking from the Ice Hogs. And from the Rockford Ice Hogs, Brett Sini is now a St. Louis Blue. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Ice Hogs got taken out by the Blues. So now St. Louis has a lot of land. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Rockford is out, 28 teams to go. Next up are the Cleveland Monsters. All right, Cleveland, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Walleyes, let's go get a game. Welcome to Huntington Center in Toledo, Ohio, where we have the final battle of Ohio between the Walleye and the Monsters. We're gonna go ahead and go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here are about 20 seconds left between Cleveland and Toledo. And Cleveland finally got the pull their goalie. So they're looking to get a goal in as a good save by Kosa. Face off down in Cleveland, or no, in the Toledo zone, excuse me. As Toledo, I, you know what? Just Toledo's going to win. Missed the net, doesn't matter. They got the win, 2-1. to one. We're going to go ahead and take a look at who the walleye will be taking from the Monsters. And from the Cleveland Monsters, Cole Sillinger is now a Toledo Walleye. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Monsters got eliminated by the Walleyes. So now Toledo controls all of Ohio already. With that, we're going to go to the wheel to see who's next. Cleveland is out. 27 teams to go. Next up are the Charlotte Checkers. All right, Checkers, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Predators. Let's go get a game. Welcome to Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee where the Charlotte Checkers and the Nashville Predators are going to battle it out for some key states on the East. We go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about a minute left between Charlotte and Nashville, as both teams have not scored a single goal in this game, so we're going to stick here until one of them do. The checkers have a shot to take on, but it does not work there. Still a control, another shot, and another save by Saros. Duchesne has it for the Predators. 
loses it, and Barry has it. Dumps it in, wraps around the checker zone. Carlson will take it, tries to pass it, gets intercepted by the Preds. Duchesne passes back to Yossi, who takes a shot and is a good block. Trennan, oh, and a good one-timer, but an even better save. The checkers have control with 15 seconds left to go. Ludwig has it, gives it to May Mayhew. Goes into the zone. 10 seconds to go. Gets poke checked. A lot of battling. Still in the zone. Takes a shot. And Sorrow saves it. And with that, we will go out ahead and go straight into overtime. Welcome to overtime number one between the Nashville Predators and the Charlotte Checkers. With that, we'll get our face off and we'll see you all in the final seconds. Being pressured. Passes down. Carlson goes in. Takes a shot and scores. And the Charlotte Checkers win one and nothing in overtime. Taking down the Nashville Predators. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Checkers will be taking from the Preds. From the Nashville Predators, Roman Yossi is now a Charlotte Checker. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Predators got taken out by the Charlotte Checkers. So now Charlotte takes control of one and a half states. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Nashville is out, 26 teams to go. Next up are the San Jose Sharks. All right, San Jose, where are you going with this spin? To take Oregon. As they take Oregon, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. Six teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Rockford Ice Hogs. And from the Rockford Ice Hogs, Rocco Grimaldi is now a San Jose Shark. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the Tucson Roadrunners. All right, Tucson, where are you going with this spin? Take Utah. As they take Utah, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. Another spin for another player. We'll be taking a player from the Rockford Ice Hogs again. And from the Rockford Ice Hogs, Otterford Soderblom is now a Tucson Roadrunner. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for yet another team. Next up are the Chicago Wolves. All right, Chicago, where are you going with this spin? To take Indiana. As they take Indiana, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. Another spin for yet another player, and we'll be taking a player from yet again the Rockford Ice Hogs. And from the Rockford Ice Hogs, Andy Walensky is now a Chicago Wolf. All right, let's go over the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for hopefully one more team. Next up are the New York Islanders. All right, New York, where are you going with this spin? to take on the Buffalo Sabres. Let's go get a game. Welcome to Keeping Center in Buffalo, New York, where the New York Islanders and the Buffalo Sabres battle out for New York. We'll go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about a minute left between the New York Islanders and the Buffalo Sabres, as both teams have been tied one to one as the Islanders scored with, with less than two minutes to go in the game. Well, at least a regulation now. So now we're going to go to get right into the action as the Sabres are trying to get it out of their zone. They take control. It's Tuck. Gets hit and loses it. It's Nelson. He's going around. And he takes a shot, but nothing there. 30 seconds. Thompson steals the cross-ice pass. Now it's Greenway. He gets knocked down. Now it's Palomari. The Islanders looking to get it out. Bailey. Does succeed in getting it out. Gives it to Nelson, who is double crunched. It's Greenway. He's going into the zone. Passes it back to Samuelson, who takes a shot. But Sorokin saves. Barzal has it. Goes into the zone with five seconds to go. Gives it to Bailey. Tries to pass it down. Doesn't connect. Passes down. Another shot's taken. And we're going to overtime. Welcome to overtime number one between the Islanders and the Sabres. And we'll see you all in the final seconds. Gets knocked down. It's Wallstrom with the breakaway. It's a two on nothing. Wallstrom takes a shot and scores. And the New York Islanders win in overtime two to one in Buffalo. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Islanders will be taking from the Sabres. And from the Buffalo Sabres, Tage Thompson is now a New York Islander. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Sabres got taken out by the Islanders. So now New York Islanders take all of New York. All right, let's go to that wheel. Buffalo is out. 25 teams to go. And next up are the San Jose Barracuda. All right, Barracuda, where are you going with this spin? To take Nevada. 
as they take Nevada. Let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. Seven teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Rockford Ice Hogs. And from the Rockford Ice Hogs, Alec Ragula is now a San Jose Barracuda. All right, let's go to the wheel. Another spin for another team. Next up are the San Jose Sharks. All right, San Jose, where are you going with this spin? Take on the Kraken. So let's go get a game. Welcome to Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle, Washington, where the San Jose Sharks and the Seattle Kraken battle out for Western Coast States. We go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 10 seconds left between San Jose and Seattle, as the Sharks have a 4-2 lead, and it looks like they'll stay like that. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Sharks will be taking from the Kraken. And from the Seattle Kraken, Vince Dunn is now a San Jose Shark. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map, as the Kraken got taken out by the Sharks. So now... San Jose has a lot of land in the West Coast. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Seattle is out, 24 teams to go. Next up are the Vancouver Canucks. All right, Vancouver, where are you going with this spin? You barely skim by and you'll be taking Yukon. As they take Yukon, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. Eight teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Seattle Kraken. From the Seattle Kraken, Adam Larson is now a Vancouver Canuck. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the Vancouver Canucks again. All right, Vancouver, where are you going this time? To take on the San Jose Sharks. Let's go get a game. Welcome to SAP Center at San Jose in San Jose, California, where the Vancouver Canucks look to take their share on some Western Coast states by taking on the San Jose Sharks. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about a minute left between Vancouver and San Jose, as both teams are tied one to one. So we're going to stick to this game to see who will break this tie. With that, let's go straight into the action to see the Vancouver having control. It's Miller trying to get around a guy he does succeed, dumps it in before he gets taken down. They take control of Pearson. Gives it down to Miller. Oh, and a good tip. Miller still has control and loses it. Garland has it. Just goes across. Tries to take a shot. Doesn't work there. And they scored, but they say no. It's a good goal. So now Vancouver is up 2-1. to one. So we're going to go ahead and come back when San Jose pulls their goalie. All right, welcome back. Didn't really lose that much time, actually. San Jose has pulled their goalie, so they're looking to tie this game. Get a 6-on-5 man advantage. Crowd is booing the heck out of Vancouver, and most likely probably the refs. Anyways, Vancouver has control with less than 15 seconds to goal. Hurdle has it now, trying to get his team to score the tying goal. They take go in, take a shot, and nothing there. Five seconds to go, done. Takes a shot, doesn't go. LeBlanc shoots, and Domenko saves. And with that, that should do it for this game. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at who Vancouver will be taking from San Jose. And from the San Jose Sharks, Eric Carlson is now a Vancouver Canuck. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Sharks got eliminated by the Canucks. So now Vancouver has a lot of West Coast territory. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. San Jose is out, 23 teams to go. Next up are the Providence Bruins. All right, Providence, which state are you taking? And they will be taking Massachusetts. As they take Massachusetts, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. Nine teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Seattle Kraken. And from the Seattle Kraken, Jared McCain is now a Providence Bruin. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the Toledo Walleye. All right, Toledo, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Grand Rapid Griffins. Let's go get a game. Welcome to Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where the Toledo Walleye and the Grand Rapid Griffins battle out for basically parts of the Great Lakes territories, actually. We're going to go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we will see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 10 seconds left between Toledo and Grand Rapids, as the Griffins have a 4-2-0 lead, and he keeps the shutout. So with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Griffins will be taking from the Walleye. And from the Toledo Walleye, Johnny Goudreau is now a Grand Rapid Griffin. All right, 
let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Toledo Walleye got taken out by the Grand Rapids Griffins. So now Grand Rapids owns a lot of Ohio. And when you mean by a lot, I mean by all of it. Anyways, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Toledo is out. 22 teams to go. Next up are the Hershey Bears. All right, Hershey, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Penguins. Let's go get a game. Welcome to PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we have a Battle of Pittsburgh, but a little different than normal. Instead of the Flyers, it is the Bears. So with that, we're going to go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 10 seconds up between Pittsburgh and Hershey, as the Penguins have a 4-2 lead against the Bears, and they're looking to get this win and take control of all of Pennsylvania. With that... We're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Penguins will be taking from the Bears. And from the Hershey Bears, Connor McMichael is now a Pittsburgh Penguin. Alright, let us go to that map. Here we are at the map as the Bears got taken out by the Penguins. So now Pittsburgh owns all of Pennsylvania. Alright, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Hershey is out. 21 teams to go. Next up are the Grand Rapids Griffins. Alright, Grand Rapids, where are you going with this spin? to take on the Ottawa Senators. Let's go get a game. Welcome to Canadian Tire Center in Kanata, Ontario, where the Grand Rapid Griffins look to expand on their empire by taking on the Ottawa Senators. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 50 seconds left between Grand Rapids and Ottawa, as the Griffins and the Senators are tied two to two so we're looking on getting this tie breaked as a shot by the Sens gets saved. Face off down in the Griffin zone, won by Grand Rapids. They got about 30 seconds left to, t to score as they're trying to rush in. Well, Reagan has it. She takes a shot. Doesn't go in there. Batherson has it. He gets knocked down. Now it's Weatherby. Gives it to Reagan. Tries to pass it down. Doesn't work. Reagan takes a shot. But Norris is able to take it. Shabbat gets his pass taken. Weatherby has another shot to take doesn't work it's Norris they got about 10 seconds left to go Batherson gets poke checked but it's the Brinkek and he gets knocked down five seconds to go he gets into the zone but loses it and it looks like we will be going to overtime face off welcome hello all right see you final seconds stops passes back to lash off passes back to Weatherby who takes a shot and scores and the Grand Rapid Griffins win it 3 to 2 in overtime. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who Grand Rapids will be getting from Ottawa. And from the Ottawa Senators, Brady Kachuk is now a Grand Rapid Griffin. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Senators got taken out by the Griffins. So now Grand Rapids expands into Canada. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Ottawa is out. 20 teams to go. Next up are the Charlotte Checkers. All right, Charlotte, where are you going with this spin? Barely skim by and we'll be taking on the Wheelie Nailers. So let's go get a game. Welcome to West Banco Arena in Wheeling, West Virginia, where the Charlotte Checkers and the Wheeling Nailers look to expand on their horizons by taking down one another. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about a minute left between Charlotte and Wheeling as both of these teams, the Checkers and the Nailers, are tied one to one, both scoring in the second actually. So now we're gonna have a face off in here to see if we can get our tie broken. With about 45 seconds left to go, the face off is dropped, won by the Nailers inside the Checker zone, takes a shot and a good save. Face off down, won by the Nailers again. They're looking to get this goal. Another shot, but it's keep being blocked in front. Goalie almost lost it, but his own teammate picks it up. The checkers have control now. They're looking to tie it, or untie it, actually, excuse me. But Buns is there, gives it to Derevin. Derevin has it control, passes down the pair. Now it's a Steves. Stops, gives it back to Pierre, takes a shot, and it bounces all the way back out. Checkers have a chance with 10 seconds left to go in regulation. Takes a shot. Ricochets off. Five seconds to go. Nailers have one last gas. No, they do not. And we are going to overtime.
Welcome to overtime number one. Face off down one. See in the final seconds. Kolmakov passes down to Buns. Driving. Kolmakov takes a shot. And he does get the rebound. And the Nailers win 2-1 to one in overtime. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who they will be taking from the Checkers. And from the Charlotte Checkers, Roman Yossi is now a wheeling nailer. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Charlotte Checkers got taken out by the wheeling nailers. So now the nailers have a lot of land here. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Charlotte is out. 19 teams left to go. Next up are the Quebec Nordiques. All right, Quebec, where are you going with this spin? To take none of it. As they are taking none of it, let's go ahead and take a look at who they will take a player from. 13 teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Seattle Kraken. And from the Seattle Kraken, Andre Burakovsky is now a Quebec Nordique. Alright, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the Tampa Bay Lightning. Alright, Tampa Bay, where are you going with this spin? To take Georgia. As they take Georgia, let's go see who the steal player from. Another spin for another player. We'll be taking a player from the Columbus Blue Jackets. And from the Columbus Blue Jackets, Patrick Laine is now a Tampa Bay Lightning. Alright, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for yet another team. We'll be going with the Tucson Roadrunners. Alright, Tucson, where are you going with this spin? To take on the San Diego Goals. Let's go get a game. Welcome to San Diego Sports Arena in San Diego, California. Where the Tucson Roadrunners look on attacking the San Diego Goals by coming in and trying to take their land. We go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 40 seconds left between Tucson and San Diego, as the goals have a one to nothing lead against the Roadrunners, and looking to secure that win, as they have control with an empty net open, but they keep running backwards, and they lose it! It's the Roadrunners! Spins around, passes it back down, big hit! San Diego's looking to get control, they lose it! Less than 20 seconds left to go! Comfer has it! Tries to pass it. It gets a little blocked, but it's still picked up by Roadrunner. He big. Tries to take a shot. Good block. Crowd counts down. Got five seconds to go. Sakura has it. Gets it out of the zone. Goes back into his zone. But it doesn't matter. Has the San Diego goals win one to nothing. So with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who they will be taking from the Tucson Roadrunners. And from the Tucson Roadrunners, Arvid Soderblom is now a San Diego goal. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Roadrunners got taken out by the goals. So now San Diego branches out from California into Arizona. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Tucson is out, 18 teams left to go. Next up are the Carolina Hurricanes. All right, Carolina, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Wheeling Nailers. So let's go get a game. Welcome to West Banco Arena in Wheeling, West Virginia, where the Carolina Hurricanes are looking to get out of their tiny area by taking on the Wheeling Nailers. We'll go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are at about basically end of game as the Carolina Hurricanes win three to one against the Nailers. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at who the Canes will be taking from the Nailers. And from the Wheeling Nailers, Roman Yossi is now a Carolina Hurricane. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Nailers got taken out by the Canes. So now Carolina expanded big. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Wheeling is out, 17 teams left to go. Next up are the Colorado Avalanche. All right, Colorado, where are you going with this spin? To take New Mexico. As they take New Mexico, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. 15 teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Charlotte Checkers. And from the Charlotte Checkers, Grigory Denisenko is now a Colorado Avalanche. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the St. Louis Blues. All right, St. Louis, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Chicago Wolves, let's go get a game. Welcome to Allstate Arena in Chicago, Illinois, where the St. Louis Blues look to capture full Illinois by taking on the Chicago Wolves. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with 10 seconds left between St. Louis and Chicago as the Blues have a 3 to nothing lead right now. Looking to keep it, but they don't! Has the Zingle scores! Preventing the shutout 
before getting eliminated by the St. Louis Blues. So with that, we're just going to go ahead and get right to where they are going to steal a player. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Blues will be taking from the Wolves. And from the Chicago Wolves, Brian Dezingle is now a St. Louis Blue. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Wolves got taken out by the Blues. So now St. Louis owns a lot of states. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Chicago is out. 16 teams left to go. Next up are the Ontario Reign. All right, Ontario, where are you going with this spin? To fight the Ducks. So let's go get a game. Welcome to Honda Center in Anaheim, California, where we have a battle of California here between the Ontario Reign and the Anaheim Ducks. We're going to go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 10 seconds left between Anaheim and Ontario as the Ducks have a 3-1 lead against the Reign, so they're looking to get this win and move on. So with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Ducks will be getting from the Reign. And from the Ontario Reign, Tobias Bjornfot is now an Anaheim Duck. Alright, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Ontario Reign got taken out by the Ducks, and now that makes less teams in California again. Alright, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Ontario's out. 15 teams left to go. Next up are the Manitoba Moose. Alright, Manitoba, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Quebec Nordiques. Let's go get a game. Welcome to Quebec Stadium in Quebec, Quebec, where the Quebec Nordiques and the Manitoba Moose battle out for Canadian territories. We're going to go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we will see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about uh, 35, 30 seconds left now as Quebec has a 4-3 lead against the Manitoba Moose. And so Quebec is looking to keep that lead as there's an empty net for them. Manitoba has that six-man advantage, but it does not matter as looks like the Nordiques keep pressuring the Moose. They haven't even entered the zone that well. Excuse me. Crowd counts down to 10. They enter the zone, though. They lose it on a hit. It's out. The Quebec Nordiques are going to win this game. And they do. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Nordiques will be taking from the Moose. And from the Manitoba Moose, Connor Hellebuck is now a Quebec Nordique. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Moose got eliminated by the Nordiques. So now Quebec expands more in Canada. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Manitoba is out. 14 teams left to go. Next up are the Grand Rapids Griffins. All right, Grand Rapids, where are you going with this spin? To take on the New York Islanders. Let's go get a game. Welcome to UBS Arena in Elmont, New York, where the Grand Rapids Griffins look to expand their oddly shaped empire by taking on the New York Islanders. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 35 seconds left between Grand Rapids and New York Islanders as the Griffins have a one to nothing lead against the Islanders who are looking to score and they almost did. But the Griffins have good defense and they're looking to score this empty netter. But a big hit keeps the Islanders alive for 20 more seconds. Horvat's going in. He's got a man with him. Barzal could have gotten the rebound but he missed and hit the goalie. And now it's McIsaac for the Griffins. Gives it the high rows to Kachuk who tries to score on the empty netter and fails. Five seconds to go for the Islanders. Could they have one last chance? Barzal dumps it in, and no. The Griffins will win one to nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at who they will be taking from the Islanders. And from the New York Islanders, Tage Thompson is now a Grand Rapid Griffin. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Islanders got taken out by the Griffins, and now Grand Rapids owns all of New York. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. New York is out, 13 teams left to go. Next up are the San Jose Barracuda. All right, San Jose, where are you going with this spin? You barely skimmed by and you'll be taking Idaho. As they take Idaho, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. 19 teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Chicago Wolves. Welcome to Rogers Arena in Vancouver, British Columbia, where the San Jose Barracuda are looking to expand their West Coast territories by taking on the Vancouver Canucks. We go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about a minute left between San Jose and Vancouver, as both teams have not scored a single goal the entire game here. 
So we're going to go ahead and stick to this action until someone does. As they get a lot of poke check, but Vancouver is still in control inside San Jose zone. Try to pass it to the goalie, which, I mean, it did hit the goalie, but he's not a part of the team. Vancouver still in control, and never mind. Now it's Robbins from the Barracuda going in. Passes down, loses the puck. Now it's Hughes. Pass all the way down to Pedersen. Goes into the zone and just immediately loses it. San Jose is looking to break the tie. He gets hit, though. Doesn't matter now. Hughes has control. It's Pedersen. Spinning around, 15 seconds to go. Kuzmenko trying to get into the zone. He does. He takes a shot. Good block. A lot of uh, back and forth here. Ruska trying to get his team going in. Takes a shot. Nothing there. And it looks like we will be going to overtime. Welcome to overtime number one between the Vancouver Canucks and the San Jose Barracuda. And we'll see you all in the final seconds. Goes in. Takes a shot. Good save by Demko. Takes another shot, and this time they score. It's West Blatt and the San Jose Barracuda win one to nothing in overtime against the Vancouver Canucks. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who they, who the Barracuda will be taking from the Canucks. And from the Vancouver Canucks, Elias Pettersson is now a San Jose Barracuda. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Canucks got taken out by the Barracuda. So now San Jose has a lot of West Coast land. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who is next. Vancouver is out, 12 teams to go. Next up are the Carolina Hurricanes. All right, Carolina, where are you going with this spin? To take Maryland. As they take Maryland, let's go on ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. And from the Manitoba Moose, Ville Henola is now a Carolina Hurricane. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the Carolina Hurricane again. All right, Carolina, where are you going with this spin? To take South Carolina. As they take South Carolina, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. Another spin from another player. Next time is the Manitoba Moose again. Okay. And from the Manitoba Moose, Jansen Harkins is now a Carolina Hurricane. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for yet another team. Next up are the St. Louis Blues. All right, St. Louis, where are you going with this spin? To take Kentucky. As they take Kentucky, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. Another spin for yet another player. We'll be taking a player from the Toledo Walleye. And from the Toledo Walleye, Cole Sillinger is now a St. Louis Blue. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for hopefully one more team. We have the Calgary Flames. All right, Calgary, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Barracuda, so let's go get a game. Welcome to Tech CU Arena in San Jose, California, where the Calgary Flames, who are defending their Ipley Cup status by taking on the San Jose Barracuda. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with 45 seconds left between Calgary and San Jose, as the Flames do have a 1 0 lead against the Barracuda, so of course, San Jose will be pulling their goalie. But it doesn't look good for them. Oh, they almost had an empty net scored on them. San Jose enters the zone with 30 seconds to go. Big hit. Good knockdown. Tanev has it for the Flames. Tries to pass it, but it's intercepted. Raska takes a shot. And a good block by Markstrom. Keeps the Flames in the lead. Huberdeau passes down to Hannafin. Takes a shot. Misses the net. Got 10 seconds to go for San Jose to tie it. And Coleman steals and scores. And with that... The Calgary Flames win this one. So we're going to go to take a look at who they'll be taking from the Barracuda. And from the San Jose Barracuda, Elias Pettersson is now a Calgary Flame. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Barracuda got taken out by the Flames. So now Calgary has a lot of land in Canada and the United States. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. San Jose is out. 11 teams to go. Next up are the San Diego Gulls. All right, San Diego, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Avalanche. Let's go get a game. Welcome to Ball Arena in Denver, Colorado, where the San Diego Gulls are looking to expand their Southwest Empire by taking on the Colorado Avalanche. We go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 45 seconds left between Colorado and San Diego, 
as both teams are tied zero to zero. And we're looking here to see who will break that tie as the goals have control. Looking to break this tie, but a good pressure by Devon Taves. Gives it to McKinnon. They go into the zone after being poke checked. It's Ranson and passes back to McKinnon who tries to give a pass to Landeskog who dove into the net. Face off down in San Diego zone with 24 seconds left to go. Puck is dropped. It's won by the Avalanche. Gerard takes a shot and it slowly crosses in as Denisenko tips it in. I swear that shot was in real time and not in slow motion. That puck did go that slow into the net. 22 seconds left to go. Face off in the neutral zone after the goal for the Avalanche. Johnson gives it to O'Connor. 15 seconds to go. It's dumped in. San Diego is looking to tie this game with 10 seconds to go. So they'll most likely pull their goalie if they get a chance. But O'Connor steals it. And now the goals have a chance again. Less than 5 seconds to go. Gage Jr. couldn't do it. And the Avalanche win one to nothing. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who they will be taking from the San Diego goals. And from the San Diego goals, Michael Del Zotto is now a Colorado Avalanche. All right. Let us go to that map. Here we are at the map as the Avalanche took out the goals and gained all of Arizona and Utah, basically having full control of the four corner states. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who is next. San Diego is out, 10 teams to go. Next up are the Pittsburgh Penguins. All right, Pittsburgh, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Grand Rapid Griffins. Let's go get a game. Welcome to Van Endel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan where the Pittsburgh Penguins are looking to expand from Pennsylvania by taking on the Grand Rapid Griffins. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 10 seconds up between Grand Rapids and Pittsburgh as the Penguins have a 4-2 lead and look to win this game with an empty netter, almost 5-2 there. But with that, doesn't matter. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at who the Penguins will be taking from the Griffins. And from the Grand Rapid Griffins, Tage Thompson is now a Pittsburgh Penguin. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Griffins got eliminated by the Penguins. Pittsburgh now owns a lot of land. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Grand Rapids is out. Nine teams left to go. Next up are the St. Louis Blues. All right, St. Louis, where are you going with this spin? To take Kansas. As they take Kansas, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. 23 teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Winnipeg Jets. And from the Winnipeg Jets, Josh Morrissey is now a St. Louis Blue. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the Quebec Nordiques. All right, Quebec, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Penguins. Let's go get a game. Welcome to PPG Paint Serena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where the Penguins are trying to defend their land from the attacking Quebec Nordiques. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 50 seconds left between Quebec and Pittsburgh. Both teams have not scored a single goal in this game, so we're going to stick here until one does. As the Penguins, it's Crosby's going in, takes a shot and a good block. Benino trying to get something going. Held against the wall now. Quebec's looking. Puck is just riding across the wall. Penguins have control inside Quebec's zone. But Quebec steals it. It's Nolan. Goes across the red into the zone. Passes down to the slot. Latang is there to block the shot. Sakic gives it to Nolan. All the way down the foot. Passes it to Albanin. Nolan. Sakic loses it. Regains it. Passes it back to foot. He gets hit. And now it's Raquel on a breakaway. He's looking to score the goal. Tries to pass it back and Sutter steals it. Oh, but the Penguins have control, but he loses it on a hit. And it looks like we will be going to overtime. Welcome to overtime number one between the Quebec Nordiques and the Pittsburgh Penguins. And we'll see you all in the final seconds. He passed down to Heinen. Who gets the rebound is Bonino. And the Pittsburgh Penguins ticked out the Quebec Nordiques. one to nothing in overtime. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Penguins will be taking from the Nordiques. And from the Quebec Nordiques, Joe Sackick is now a Pittsburgh Penguin. All right, let's go to the map. 
Here we are at the map as the Nordiques got taken out by the Penguins. So now Pittsburgh owns a lot of land in Canada. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Quebec is out, eight teams to go. Next up are the Pittsburgh Penguins. All right, Pittsburgh, where are you going with this spin? And they go all the way through and take Saskatchewan. As they take Saskatchewan, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll take a player from. 24 teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Rockford Ice Hogs. What the? And from the Rockford Ice Hogs, Philip Roos is now a Pittsburgh Penguin. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the Pittsburgh Penguins again. All right, Pittsburgh, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Carolina Hurricanes. Let's go get a game. Welcome to PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina, where the Pittsburgh Penguins and the North Car and the just Carolina Hurricanes, excuse me, battle out for a lot of land in the United States and Canada. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 10 seconds left between Pittsburgh and Carolina as the Penguins have gone out with a 3-0 victory. Yes, a 3-0 victory. So with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Penguins will be taking from the Canes. And from the Carolina Hurricanes, Roman Yossi is now a Pittsburgh Penguin. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Canes got taken out by the Pens. So now Pittsburgh owns even more land. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Carolina is out. 17 teams, or seven teams to go, excuse me. And St. Louis Blues are next. All right, St. Louis, where are you going with this spin? to take on the Penguins. Let's go get a game. Welcome to PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where the St. Louis Blues look to expand on their Midwest area by taking on the Pittsburgh Penguins. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we will see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about a minute left between St. Louis and Pittsburgh, as both teams have not scored a goal here. So they're looking to score one and a good shot, but an even better block. But the St. Louis Blues are still pressuring, and Jari holds. Face off down in the Penguin zone, won by Pittsburgh. Thompson has control of it. 40 seconds to go in regulation. Crosby goes into the zone, gets a lot of men around him. Shen has it. He gets hit hard. Petri has it now, hoping to get the Penguins into the zone. Does succeed in that. Passes it back to the slot. He gets it back somehow. Sackett takes a shot, and it's blocked. Buchnevich has it. Goes into the zone for the Blues. He gets hit hard. Thompson has it now. Held against the wall. Pittsburgh has 10 seconds to go to score. It's Pedersen. Gets around a guy. Not really. Crosby has it. Passes down to Pedersen. He gets a little puckero. Pedersen still has it. Passes back. And we're going to overtime. Welcome to overtime number one between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the St. Louis Blues. We'll get our face off and we'll see you all in the final seconds. Lievo takes a shot. It's blocked. Buchnevich scores! And the St. Louis Blues take down the Penguins. one nothing in overtime. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who they will be taking from the Penguins. And from the Pittsburgh Penguins, Sidney Crosby is now a St. Louis Blue. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Penguins got taken out by the Blues. So now St. Louis owns that land. All right, let's go to that wheel. Pittsburgh is out. Six teams to go. Next up are the Tampa Bay Lightning. All right, Tampa, where are you going with this spin? To take Louisiana. As they take Louisiana, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. 26 teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Carolina Hurricanes. And from the Carolina Hurricanes, Sebastian Ajo is a Tampa Bay Lightning. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Another spin for another team. Next up are the Colorado Avalanche. All right, Colorado, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Blues. So let's go get a game. Welcome to Enterprise Center in St. Louis, Missouri, where the Colorado Avalanche are looking to expand on their empire by taking on the St. Louis Blues. We go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about a minute left between Colorado and St. Louis as both the teams have tied two, or both teams are tied at two, scoring two goals. So we're going to go ahead and stick to this action until the tie is broken. Crosby takes a shot and Gorgiev saves. 
face off down in the avalanche zone. Won by the Blues. Morrissey has control. Now it's Falk. Who gets hit? Spins around like a Beyblade. McKinnon gives it to Landeskog. Goes around. Loses it on some Pokin. And Mc Rantanen had a shot, but Bennington saves. Face off down in the blue zone. Puck dropped. Won by the Avalanche. Johnson. One timer. Rantanen. And a good block by Bennington. And oh! He. Good defense by the Blues. As they have control now, it's Kairou. Gives it down. Bushnovich has control now. Getting pressured. Johnson puts him down. Ranson picks it up and passes it to Johnson. Avalanche are looking to get something going here. They got 10 seconds to go. Bushnovich has control. Gives it to Thomas. Letty has control. Passes it to Bushnovich. Gets hit by Ranson. Johnson holds it. And we are going to overtime. Welcome to overtime number one between the Colorado Avalanche and the St. Louis Blues. We'll go down to center ice to get our face off, and we'll see you all in the final seconds. Gets around a guy, tries to take a shot, doesn't work. Sod scores! And the Blues win 3-2! to two. And we'll be taking a lot more land. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Blues will be taking from the Avalanche. And from the Colorado Avalanche, Nathan McKinnon is now a St. Louis Blue. All right, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Avalanche got taken out by the Blues. So now St. Louis owns a lot more land in the United States. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Colorado is out. Five teams to go. Next up are the St. Louis Blues. All right, St. Louis, where are you going with this spin? To take Nebraska. As they take Nebraska, let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll steal a player from. 27 teams in this wheel, and we'll be taking a player from the Grand Rapid Griffins. And from the Grand Rapid Griffins, Johnny Gaudreau is now a St. Louis Blue. All right, let's go to the wheel. Another spin for another team. And next up are the Calgary Flames. All right, Calgary, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Blues. Let's go get a game. Welcome to Enterprise Center in St. Louis, Missouri, where the Calgary Flames look to battle on the Blues to keep their Ipley Cup champion status alive. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 45 seconds left between Calgary and St. Louis, as the Blues have pulled their goalie because they are down 0 to 1. And they're looking to tie this game as they enter with Goudreau. Now it's Perienko. Back to Goudreau. McKinnon takes a shot and it blocks off. Now the Flames have a chance to end this game. Oh, with a good poke. Weger takes a shot and barely misses the net. It's Krug. Now it's Puchovic. McKinnon, Crosby, Goudreau. They go into the zone. Pass back to McKinnon who takes a shot and a good block by Markstrom. Ten seconds to go for the Blues. But the Flames have control. Pass it down to Lindholm. Krug steals it. Buchnovic has it. Less than five seconds to go. He shoots. It's blocked off. And the Flames win one to nothing. And with that, we're going to go and take a look at who they'll take from the Blues. And from the St. Louis Blues, Nathan McKinnon is now a Calgary Flame. All right, let's go take a look at that map. Here we are at the map as the Blues got eliminated by the Flames. So now Calgary is the big juggernaut of this map. All right, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. St. Louis is out. Four teams to go. Next up are the Tampa Bay Lightning. All right, Tampa Bay, where are you going with this spin? To take on the Flames, let's go get a game. Welcome to Scotiabank Saddledome in Calgary, Alberta, where we have a 2004 Stanley Cup Finals rematch between the Calgary Flames and the Tampa Bay Lightning. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with a minute left between Tampa Bay and Calgary, as both of these teams have scored two goals, so that means they are tied at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and stick with this until someone breaks that tie. As the Lightning have control, going into the zone. Takes a shot, and Markstrom saves that one. Zadorov has control for the Flames. Passes down to Pedersen. Gives it down to Foley. To Foley's trying to look for an open man. Passes down to Zadorov, who takes a shot. And a good block. And now a one-timer by Pedersen, and Vasilevsky saves that. Aho has control with 20 seconds to go for the Lightning. He's going in, takes a shot, and Markstrom saves. Doesn't hold on to it. Puck battle in front of him. Kadri has control. Loses it. Point shoots and Markstrom saves. Face off down in Calgary zone. 
One by the Flames. Zadorov held against the wall with five seconds to go. Dumps it down and Lindholm has it. He gets it. Aho tries to pass. It doesn't work. And we're going to overtime. Welcome to overtime number one between the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Calgary Flames. We'll see you all in the final seconds. Point goes in. Gives it down. Oh, wait. That was Aho to point. Aho. Pass it to Kucherov who scores. And the Tampa Bay Lightning win it 3-2 in double overtime. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who they will be taking from the Flames. And from the Calgary Flames, Nathan McKinnon is now a Tampa Bay Lightning. All right, let's go to that map. Here we are at the map as the Flames got eliminated by the Lightning, so we'll have a new non-repeating Stanley Cup, Ipley Cup, excuse me, champion. <laughs> uh, NHL playoffs are getting to me. Anyways, let's go to the wheel to see who's next. Calgary is out. Three teams to go. Next up are the Anaheim Ducks. We don't even need to do a wheel spin here as the Ducks will no matter what fight the Lightning. So let's go get a game. Welcome to Molly Arena in Tampa, Florida. Where the Anaheim Ducks are looking to take down the Tampa Bay Lightning to punch their ticket to the Ipley Cup Finals. We go down to center ice to get a face off between these two teams. And we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 10 seconds left between Anaheim and Tampa Bay as the Ducks have a 4-1 lead and looking to win this way and punch their ticket to the Ipley Cup Finals. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who the Ducks will be taking from the Lightning. And from the Tampa Bay Lightning, Nathan McKinnon is now an Anaheim Duck. Alright, let's go to the map. Here we are at the map as the Lightning got taken out by the Ducks. And now we have our finalist for Ipley Cup number 11, the Anaheim Ducks and the Providence Bruins. So let's go ahead and go to the wheel to see who will be the away team for game one. Tampa Bay is out, two teams to go, and the Providence Bruins will be the away team for game one of the Ipley Cup finals. So let's go get a game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hana Center in Anaheim, California where we have Game 1 of Season 11's Ipley Cup Finals between the Anaheim Ducks and the Providence Bruins. With that, we're going to go down to center ice, get our face off, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with 10 seconds left between Providence and Anaheim as the Bruins have a 3 to nothing lead, so they look poised to take Game 1 of the Ipley Cup Finals. All right. With that, we're going to go ahead down to Providence for Game 2. So we'll see you there. Welcome to Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, Rhode Island, where the Providence Bruins look to win their first Ipley Cup by taking on the Anaheim Ducks in Game 2 of the Ipley Cup Finals. We go down to center ice to get a face-off between these two teams, and we'll see you all in the final moments of the game. Here we are with about 45 seconds left as the Ducks have the lead 2-1. to one. So we're going to see if the Bruins can break the tie or will, or not break the tie, tie the game. Or will the Ducks win it all and go force a game three? So we're going to go into the action with 25 seconds left as the puck is in the wall battling. Ducks have control. Providence has an empty netter. It's Terry. He's looking to finish this game and he gets knocked down. Offsides. 15 seconds left. Face off in the neutral zone. Won by the Ducks. They're looking to end this game. Zegris has it. There's no empty netter, though. Henrique, Strom. Now it's Karik. Wagner, five seconds to go for the Bruins. They're looking to tie the game. He can't do anything, and the Ducks win game two. And with that, we're going to go to game three all the way down in Anaheim, so we will see you all there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game three between the Providence Bruins and the Anaheim Ducks. This is it, the last game of the season. We'll go down to get our final face off and we'll see you all in the final moments of the final game. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the final 10 seconds between Providence and Anaheim as the Ducks are down. One to two, they just scored and they're looking to tie, but I think the Bruins, oh! And we've got an injured Bruin. We have two and a half seconds left to go in regulation for game three. Face off, down. Ducks looking to win it. Silverberg shoots and the 
Bruins! The Providence Bruins win season 11! They're the new Ipley Cup champions! Losing in season 10, they made a comeback all the way down and won the next season. Let's go to that map to take a look at what we've got in store. Here we are at the map for one final time as the Ducks have been eliminated by the Bruins, which that makes the Providence Bruins your season 11 Ipley Cup champions. Congratulations to the Providence Bruins. It took them a really long time to win one. As you know, we introduced the AHL in season six, five seasons ago, and they haven't won one until now. So congratulations to them. We're gonna go ahead and get right into statistics to see who um, scored the most goals, most assists, had the total points, who um, traveled the most, who our Ipley Cup Finals MVP is, and which goal horn was used the most at home. All right, let's head straight to that. Welcome to statistics. We're just going to go ahead and get right into this one. Starting off with the most goals in the season, we have a two-way tie between Pavel Buchnevich and Sidney Crosby. For most assists, we have a five-way tie between Johnny Gaudreau, Jansen Harkins, Sebastian Ajo, Adam Henrique, and Trevor Zegris. For total points, we have a three-way tie for five points between Johnny Gaudreau, Sidney Crosby, and Adam Henrique. Our Ipley Cup Finals MVP also goes to Adam Henrique, scoring two goals and one assist in three games, a point per game. Lastly, for our individual player awards, we have our Journeyman, which has a two-way tie between Roman Yossi and Nathan McKinnon. Now, we'll move on to everyone's favorite statistic, Goal Horns. Coming in at fifth place with two Goal Horns, we have a four-way tie between the Calgary Flames, the Ottawa Senators, the Seattle Kraken and the Toledo Walleye. Coming in at fourth place, we have a three-way tie scoring three goals. We have the Arbersford Canucks, the St. Louis Blues, and the Wheeling Nailers. Coming in at third place, we have a two-way tie between the Anaheim Ducks and the Quebec Nordiques, both scoring four goals. In second place, we have the Pittsburgh Penguins, scoring five goals. And number one, scoring six goal horns, we have the Grand Rapids Griffins. Welp, that's it. Season 11 is finished and we have another winner in our records book. With that, Season 12 will be coming up shortly for the second of three part of the Residue series that we're doing here. So please stay tuned for that announcement coming next week. With that, it is me, that one guy from the one place at that one time, Jaguar110, and I will see you all next season. P.S. Note, some of you may know there is a new Discord server for this community. I will link it down in the description for you all to join. So, uh, yeah, please uh, check it out and uh, see you there. Thank you.